All right. Welcome, everyone. It's April 11th. I'm sorry, April 12th, 2022. And this is the Cloud Custodian Community Meeting uh, for this two-week period. Got a few things on the agenda. I've, I've pasted the URL to the notes um, in chat. And let me just share the notes so that you can check it out. And then we'll get started. So we've been talking about this the last few times. It's just another reminder to everyone that we are be going to be having a development sprint at PyCon 2022. This is, what are the dates on this? May 2nd to May 3rd. And if you click on the link in the notes, it'll take you to the Cloud Custodian section there. And if you are attending PyCon, we'd love to have you stop by, even if you don't want to hack on stuff. Uh, if you just use Cloud Custodian, you can drop by and say hello. We'd love to have you. All right. Moving on from that, um, I put release today, question mark, Sonny. Um, we had talked about automated uh, releases, and I've added that to the board now. And Sonny's going to start working on it. And we were kind of thinking, what well, would be a good cadence to start? And Kapil threw out second Tuesday of, of the month. Sounds good. And that is today. Um, so Sonny figured he would start doing stuff. So do you, ha do you have... Uh, do you have anything for us today? I know it's um, yeah, I'm in the middle of uh, getting the list PR um, fixed and working. For some reason, um, this is hitting, hitting some CI issues, but uh, hopefully, either today or tomorrow, try to get a release out. Okay, awesome. And uh, when that happens, we'll go ahead and post that on the list and the usual places. If you're looking for a roadmap, just another reminder, if you just go to the Cloud Custodian org, click projects, and it says roadmap, uh, it gives you the list of stuff on there, but I like to do the board view. We'll kind of show you what we're working on. There's some items from the old roadmap that have not made it into here, and I'll be going through those and triaging, seeing what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. Um, anybody have questions on releases? Yeah, one question. How are the releases notes generated? Um, reason we're uh, asking this is because um, um, we don't really have a, a good uh, automated way to retest all of our policies, right? And if we were to upgrade, um, how do we have confidence that you know nothing is broken? Uh, we were relying on looking at the release note, uh, things like adding new functionality, right? We can just all ignore those. We will assume that that wouldn't break anything. But if we see something like, oh, modify, let's say, the way this future works or something like that, then we might want to take a closer look at our policies to see if it changed the functionality that, that we were expecting. So I'm just curious, how are the release note generated? Yeah, so now I'll move um, forward. Yeah. yeah, so on each... Um... Each release will contain release notes on the uh, GitHub tag itself. Those are generated through, we have a basically a script that crawls the GitHub commit history uh, in the repo. So it's not, um, I believe it's under dev slash yeah, log py or something. I can pull it up. Um, yeah. So it's right here. I'll post it in the chat. Thank you. Um, there's a little bit of like manual massaging. Uh, like for example, if a commit message doesn't exactly match the format, um, but basically run that, creates the change log, and then we uh, create the tag in GitHub. So does it mainly look at the uh... I guess either the commit messages or the log messages to figure out how it generated or? Right, oh, it's the uh, commit messages, yeah, yeah on the, uh, the main branch. Okay. I'll link that there. And then of course, if there are breaking changes, uh, how, how, how is that determined? So that's, um, I mean, it depends on what you mean by breaking. Like if you're saying interface changes, we typically try not to have any um, interface changes on the policy 
DSL itself. Um, like if a bug is introduced, like obviously it's hard to know when you're generating the release notes, like of oh, this implementation or this functionality is buggy. Um, but for big things, typically uh, we'll have a, I don't want to say for certain, but I, I would think that we would have a larger version increment than the minor version that we typically do. So like we're on 9.15 right now, next release is 9.16. That should indicate there's no breaking functionality um, between the two. Uh, oh yeah, talking about versioning, <laughs> you guys don't really follow Semver. I mean, you guys still at zero point something. Uh, what's the plan moving forward? I don't want to speak for Capil necessarily, but um, the 1.0 release has been uh, not necessarily delayed, but um, some functionality that we want to get in before 1.0 uh, isn't fully baked yet. Like I think the deprecation framework and stuff is is one of those yeah. things. Um, I would say for the most part, it's it's mostly somewhere like you shouldn't you shouldn't face a breaking change by going up a minor version um if you do that's not intended so like I, like your policy language and stuff that should be safe um and the the behavior i mean the underlying behavior may change a little bit but it's it shouldn't it shouldn't be like um, breaking one thing you can well, do. I don't think that um, statement is true, though. I mean, in the past, you guys have bum up minor version, and it is breaking change. So has the interface broken for you? Yeah, several, several things. I mean, I mean, we are in the process progress of migrating right now. And or to just to give you some background, um, um, mm -hmm. we were relying on having the ability before to um, have, I'll say, custom code. Right? And all of that got ripped out. Um, and now, um, so we're in the migration now. Uh, but yeah, it, it was just a minor, uh, it, it was called out, you know, um, but uh, it's not similar um, for sure. Unless you're treating the, the minor version as a major version right now. Um, so I think the custom plugin interface stuff was never fully public. Yeah. As, as far as I remember, which is why it wasn't, I mean, there was a note about it from what I recall. Um, okay. But you should, I mean, I'm, I'm talking specifically in the DSL, like okay. that itself should not break from version to version. Okay. Yeah, I'm also wondering if we can make a more concrete statement because the impression I've gotten is that we try to do some December, but I don't think we say we don't guarantee it either. Maybe we can tighten that up you know what i mean as we get towards a 1.0 yeah i think the, the the policy syntax is the main yeah interface that people that that we support like as an, a public interface yeah um like if you're writing code off of custodian as like a um sdk or apr like that's not that's not yeah. the the public interface well, here's another example of what I would consider to be breaking, uh, breaking change that kind of relate to one of the uh, PR that we have open right now too is, uh, in the past, uh, conflict pole rule, we were able to use it for pretty much any resources, but there was um, um, uh, um, a change to throw an error if it detects that resource is supported natively by config rule mode. So that is a breaking change because we can, uh, it, it's now throwing an error. Gotcha. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm unaware of the specifics on that one. I, I, yeah, I haven't really used the config rule stuff much, but. Um, yeah, I think I'm just yeah, calling out, I think uh, uh, as we move to one point, uh, yeah. zero, uh, we need to be more specific uh, on, you know, are we following Samba? And if so, how do we determine what is breaking change and call that out in, yeah, um, in the chain, in the release log? 
especially yeah, we move to a, an automated uh, way too which i do i do want to have an automated uh, release yeah. um but how if we move toward that path how do we ensure you know the, the release uh logs uh generated and things that call out um so we can watch out for when they are breaking changes let's see Aaron, it'd be great to sort us before a 1.0 Yeah, the, the versioning scheme, I could see the versioning scheme changing. I know this has already come up. If we're going to switch to automated releases, then yeah. trying to call out breaking changes in notes and using a versioning scheme based on uh, based more on dates can make sense in that case, but we just we don't have that locked down yet. Yeah, I don't think we've had that discussion as far as you know what the versioning and the feature landing and all that stuff is implied when you automate releases. Okay, I've got I've got this down. Uh, everyone see the notes there? Hopefully, I didn't make fires out of us. Um, but yeah, all right. Uh, we I could definitely bring that up to Kapil. You know what? Uh, I know that we've said semver ish is I think the term I've heard thrown around, but um, we could definitely either make a more firm statement or add another here be dragons if if that's the case for certain parts of it. You know what I mean? Um, but the DSL and syntax, Sonny, would you, we call that pretty frozen? Like that's not a. Yeah, it should be yeah. um, only additive. Oh, let me put only additive. That's a good idea. Hey. Anything more on release stuff? Notes, numbers? All right, onward to a 1.0. Um, for the next one, before we look at the PRs, um, still waiting on a review on uh, 7029. Uh, Darren, that's yours. That's mostly just uh, trying to get uh, Kapil enough time to review it. Uh, I just wanted to note it here that it's still on his to do. Um, we have a few PR op that uh, were open uh, in the last two week period. And AJ, did you have? I think you had one that you wanted to talk about. Um, if there are any other PRs that people would like to go over or discuss, you can either uh, toss the number in the in the chat or go into the notes and paste it in, and we can go over those as well. Usually, we just, we don't try to go over each one like a list because that'd be really boring. But if you see something that's like interesting or you'd like to get you know opinions on, that's that's what the rest of this uh, meeting is about. Um, I've got the first one here that I, I'd like to talk about is 7201, uh, which was just a question from the community, uh, which was, uh, how do we keep track of resources that clock custodian removes due to violations? And Jameson, uh, left some tips here. Uh, a dedicated mailbox is useful. Um, you can also do a versioned S3 bucket. Um, I just wanted to point that out, uh, that we posted that there. If anyone has any other tips or anything they'd like to recommend um that issue is 7201 if you have any opinions on that um so that's the one i brought today anyone else have uh, any other ones pending review i i darren i think 7029 is the main one that you have right and i think aj merged the other one do you have any outstanding ones that yeah there are two really old one and then one new one okay i mean there's no point in, ta in talking about the the two older ones since uh okay are waiting for for Kapil, unless uh aj wants to take a look at them uh, which uh yeah the the config manager rule i felt like i could look at but there was already discussion and i was going to add yeah. zero <laughs> and then the other uh, one was uh cider yeah. one Oh, the, oh, and the cider yeah. one. Which you are yeah. chiming to as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? The cider one, this is the case where it might just make sense to be opinionated and pull the trigger on the one that we had, uh, the older one. Um, 7112, is that the one that it was? Um, let's see. No, no, no. That's a different one. I don't have the number handy. I can. Uh, yeah. Let me go pull it up there. It, it, one of them is. 7129, I believe. 7129. Nice. Yeah, so 7129 references, 
5971. Uh, so it's good to say numbers. Um, yeah, and I think what might be useful here, uh, and this is a good, hey, George, this is a good idea for a community meeting. Yeah. Um, I think that 5971, it, that came out of a, a discussion with a, a few different folks. And that the logic there looks pretty good to me. It uh, looks like it just got it, it got hung up there. Uh, but some of the work in in the other one in 7129 uh, had some nice documentation, some examples. So I think it might be nice to take the example and documentation from 7129 and tack it onto the work in 5971, and then merge that glorious hybrid into a uh, into a better CIDR filter. Uh, anyone who has followed any of this, does that sound like a reasonable thing, or is that madness? It sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, if, if you do the... Um... What's the get thing to make sure that the other person gets the? Oh, the co-author. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I want tack a co-authored by on there. Yeah. Right. So I, I want uh, I want uh, I, I want the the credit to show up. Uh, and that's your coworker, right? Uh, uh, Katie, yeah. That? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Katie. And so yeah, I want him to get the credit for that, not for just adding the documentation and the examples, but also for resurfacing the issue so that we don't lose track of it. Uh, so yes, that sounds good to me. All right, let's do that. I'll take that action item. Okay, cool. Oh, and Todd, I, I missed that Todd had looked at this after he said he would. I need to spin <laughs> up on this one. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then so separate from that one, which I think is a good one. Um, the other, uh, and there's the config manage one, which I, I will add no use. Well, you too. Uh, but Darren, did you have another one open? Yes, that was, yes. Uh, uh, it's on the open PR list that uh, George just uh, uh, oh, There's one second. I just wanted to grab 5971. On the... I should just do an author search for Darren uh, ahead of these calls because you, uh, you've got uh, a lot going. No, 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 yeah. Other people in my teams are doing that now. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What's the, uh, what was the number? That one is seventy one ninety four. There it is. Okay. Okay. So this one is, um, I think, it's pretty interesting. And uh, you know, in case we miss something, I, I really think this is uh, something that we we should fix or, or allow again. And relate to what I was talking about, the breaking change, uh, which is right now for config beside manage config, which are, we're trying to add. You know, right now we can run config poll rule. A config rule. The way that I, uh, a quick summary of it is config poll rule is more periodic mode versus config rule is more event based. Um, now, there is a check in config poll rule that will error out if you're trying to use config poll rule on a resource that is natively supported by config rule. Um, the problem that uh, we see here is event based doesn't work all the time. Especially, uh, well, specifically for resources and filter, where the filter is on something, uh, it's not really part of the resource itself. An example would be the resource is VPC, but the um, the filter is a flow log. As an example, you can see right there. So basically, this um, this policy is saying um, uh, mark thing as non-compliant. Mark the VPC as non-compliant if it doesn't have flow log set up. This will work on creation, right? Because creation, you create VPC, you, uh, you, you get the event. But on update, if somebody update the VPC to not have the flow log, that event doesn't trigger uh, uh, or doesn't send the event um, under the VPC resource in AWS config. So then the event base policy never get triggered and things okay. never get updated in terms of compliant and not compliant in config. So for, for these kind of situation, we have been relying on periodic mode to check daily. I mean, it's not you know, near real time, but at least we have daily report of things that are compliant and not compliant. Uh, so this PR is to 
um, have a way to override and say, hey, skip that check to uh, let us use config poll rule mode if we really want to. So it, it's just adding in a new uh, new um, property under the mode right there. So ignore config support check. Interesting. Okay, so that's making it more of a conscious opt-in. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, let me take a look at that. I, I'm sure, I'm trying to think about the, the motivation behind putting this in there. And I know when you when we have any of those periodic modes, there's always a, a little bit of reservations around that because mm -hmm. it, there, it's a lot of uh, the API volume. It, it, it can be kind of slow. We're not getting, we're not benefiting from the caching. So mm -hmm. it tends to be kind of a foot gun. Yeah. But if if it's a if it's a problem that's I mean if you've got a use case and we don't have another way to solve it and that was helpful then yeah uh, and this is just one one example there are, there are other kinds of policy where you have again the the the, the pattern is you have a resource and then the filter is on I would say uh, um is cloud confirmation or AWS treat the filter as a separate resource mm -hmm. it's not a property of the res of the resource itself so uh, when the event happened it happened. And a, a different resource. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this would be like any, you're saying like any related um, resource, like uh, yes. the security group rules under a EC, uh, an EC2 instance is using changes. It wouldn't show them. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Yes. Yep, that makes sense. Right, so okay, and how are how are you running the, those sorts of issue uh, those sorts of policies now? If you can't use the config rule period, are you just running a regular periodic mode? Or are you running it through like C seven N org or something else? Uh, no, custom code. Remember, we're, we're just we're, doing custom yeah, code. Okay. Right now, we're migrating it. Yeah. Okay. Um, we were um uh, something similar like poll um co um config poll rule, but th this was before you guys start adding support for config. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, thanks. I'll take a look at that one. And Sunny, I don't know, I, you may have already looked at it. But, OK. I think that's it for my side. Uh, while, while we're talking about Darren adjacent uh, pull requests, uh, the distributed Darren network that is, <laughs> that is coming in and uh, updating Custodian, the one uh, from your teammate about um, Adding the RDS consecutive snapshot filter, that yeah. was uh, that was neat. That was a cool one. So, mm -hmm. so thanks to you for the assist on that. Uh, thanks to Chess Grover for um, for authoring it. Mm -hmm. uh, that was good fun. Thank you. I think George, you're on mute if you're talking. Uh, this was the one where they had two PRs, but one of them had the issue with the CLA bot, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, were we able to get more information on that? Because I'm going to be talking to the Easy CLA folks. Um, it uh, was how he was set up the email. Uh, okay. His 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 Git um, configuration. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, because there are cases where the bot won't acknowledge a change, and we have to, we type slash Easy CLA, and then that forces the bot to check it again. So I'm. So there sure was a scenario we where we have to. So after we set up. Um, um, the user uh, or whatnot what, what in um, CLA, we have to manually click on the red button where I say, you know, um, missing CLA. Yeah. Once we click on it, then then somehow whatever happened behind the scene, then then um, it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. If those come up, um, I'm trying to collect all the issues that we're having to take it to the easy CLA authors to make that mm -hmm. make that easier because it's been a it's been a pain point in the past. Good to know on that one, though. Um, all right. So this one got merged, so we're happy with that one. Mm -hmm. um, anything else on the list? Jumping out at anyone? And I can open it up for questions as well. If you uh, if you join late and just had a question about custodian that you'd like to answer while we have everyone here, that's pretty much the end of the... Uh, uh, the agenda there. One item that I have, um, I know in the past, Kapil has talked about, um, what's it called? What, is, what is it called? Policy as code or something like that. It's more about shifting left in terms of doing the policy check more at build time 
as versus after things already deployed or, or in the process of deploying. And I think he dropped up some proposal, but it never seen any uh, updates or, or, or I don't think there's any progress on it. Is that something um, he's still looking at? Is anybody looking at it? Because at Intuit, we do have interest so, in that too. Yeah. Yeah. So under the tools directory, um, it has been sort of paused. Um, like there has been a lot of activity on it, but if you go to C7N Terraform, um, that's basically the, uh, the shift left stuff. So it'll inspect your Terraform, mm -hmm. um, HCL files, and then you can write policies against it. Um, I think the person I was working on it the most was Marco at the time, but he hasn't, um, been working on it for a while there there was a proposal as well if is that the one that you're referencing yeah 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 okay i'll, I'll take a look at this but it sounds like it's not actively being worked on which is fine yeah it's yeah it touches mm -hmm. its fiber, it looks like yeah all right any final questions All right. Thanks, everyone. The next meeting that we have, a bunch of the Stacklet folks will be at a sprint, but we're hoping Ooh, to I just thought about something, this. Oh. George. Um, yes. right, let's see, because are we having... We don't. Um, so next week, we have a uh, C7N 101 class. Um, so that's Wednesday, April 20th. Um, okay. And it's in, if you go to Livestorm, oh, here, I'm about to get you the link. So I will, I will make sure I add this on the notes. Yeah, well. yeah. I just, I was just like, ah, that's next week. Um, it's the same. It just goes, it, or it will cover um, basic uh, policy and basic anatomy of a policy and with some demos. Um, so might not, you know, I think everyone here might be beyond that, but mm -hmm. if you know someone who, um, maybe is like new on your team or something and you want to show this to them, um, or you want them to attend, it's free. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just ask that you register at that link. All right. So that's next Wednesday and I'll make sure I add it on the yes. notes before I publish to the list. And it says here you're, you're teaching with me. So <laughs> Yeah, I better I better get okay. it together. Then. You've done it before. You know what's up. Yeah. All right. Unless anyone has anything else, going once, going twice. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see everyone in two weeks. Cheers. Thanks. Hi, Akif. Before we bail. Oh.